Hi, welcome to your lesson on applied trigonometry. As you may remember, there are three main trig ratios, one of which is the tan ratio. So the tan of some angle is always the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Oh, here's an interesting way to remember that. Fake tan. Look at this guy with his fake tan. When we see a beautiful fake tan like that, we say, ooh, ah, so tangent opposite over adjacent ooh ah easy to remember fake tan okay let's go on so as you may remember tangent was not the only one we had to memorize it was opposite over adjacent but there was also sine which is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine which is adjacent over hypotenuse we can memorize those using this acronym SOCATOA sine cosine tangent Never forget. Okay, so some warm-up problems. Let's see if you've mastered basic trig ratios. Here's our first warm-up problem. I'll give you a hint. You're going to use a sine, sorry, not sine. You're going to use a trig ratio once and then another one. Doing only one trig ratio will not be enough to find this side here. Okay, so let's see what you tried. I called this side H, H for the height of this triangle. Now, when we use trig ratios, we need to know two parts of a triangle. So in this right triangle on this side, we know one angle, one side. On this triangle here though, all we know is this angle. So we can't solve anything there yet. Over here we can because we know two parts. So let's try. Tangent of 39, I chose tangent because we have 39, I'm going opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Solve for h by multiplying by 38, we get 30.8. So this is 30.8. Now we look at this little right triangle and we do have enough information now because we have an angle and a side. So we can solve for a third thing. I'm gonna set up a sine ratio. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse solve that. Remember when we have the denominator x here, we can swap these two to get this. And then x equals 35.6. Good. Let's go on. If that was tough, that's okay. Let's do some more. So now you know you're going to have to do two trig ratios. Let's try this one. Okay. Hopefully you labeled this as well. I'm calling this h again for height. I'm setting up a ratio in this triangle because I have two things. So tangent opposite over adjacent, which is 9 over h. h becomes 9 over 1035, and we have 12.9. So that is our height. Now in this triangle where we have the unknown that we're looking for, now we have two things, 61 degrees and the 12.9 we just found for height. So the ratio there is going to be tangent, all right, tangent of 61 is opposite over adjacent. So x over 12.9, multiply by 12.9, solve, and we have this value for x. Hmm. Second one, hopefully it went better. Let's go to another one. Try this one. This time we're looking for an angle here. All right, so let's take a look. In this case, I first noticed that this entire side is 20.6. But that doesn't help us because we have two right triangles here. So we need to know pieces of each triangle. So I'm going to call this little piece here x. Because again, in this triangle, all we have is one side. But in this triangle, we have an angle and a side. So we can do more with this triangle. And by finding x, we'll be able to figure out what this portion is. So tangent, let's use that, opposite over adjacent. 12.4 opposite over adjacent, x. Solve for x by swapping these two and we have 7.7. So now we know this is 7.7. So that means 20.6 minus this 7.7 will give us this length here. So I'm going to call that length y. And we again, we know it's going to be 20.6 minus that. So that's what I did here, 12.9. So y is 12.9. Now in this triangle to find theta, I'm going to do tangent. Tangent of theta it equals opposite over adjacent, so 12.4 over 12.9, which is this y. Remember, when we need the angle, we use inverse trig functions, so inverse tan, those values, and we get an angle 43.7 degrees. Let's try another one. 
check this one out, see if you can solve for x. All right, I'm going to call this entire length A because we there's only one right triangle we have. We have two triangles here, but this one here is not a right triangle. We only have one true right triangle, the entire triangle. And in the whole triangle, the right triangle, I have hypotenuse 900, and maybe I can find this length here. So I'm going to use cosine from 20. Cosine is adjacent, so it's this whole side, A, over hypotenuse 900. So there's my ratio. Solve for A by multiplying by 900. And that means A is this value here. So if A represents the entire length. Then we can get X by doing the entire length, 845.7 minus 479. I'm setting that up in a little slightly different way here. I'm saying A is made up of 479 plus X. And we know A is what I just found it to be right here. Subtract that 479, and we get x equals this value here. And that was it. No other trig ratio necessary. Next, how about this one? Take a look at this. Look at the hint you're given here and see if you can solve for x. All right. First of all, when you have a triangle and you have two angles, you can always find a third angle because all three angles always sum to 180. So 180 minus those two gave me 65. Now, it says create a line or sketch a line to create right triangles. Just like before in those questions, not this one, because this was not two right triangles, but in these previous ones, we had two right triangles every time. That's what we're trying to create in this diagram here. So there's the angle. I'm going to drop a line straight down, like a height line right there. And now I've created two right angles here because these are perpendicular. So right angle, right angle. So right triangle, right triangle. Call this H again, the height. And now we're back to what we did before in the previous questions. We have this part here where we have two, two things that we know about that triangle so we can solve for H. And then we'll know two things here and we can solve for X. So sine of 65, opposite H over hypotenuse 12, H over 12. H equals 12 times that. And we have 10.9. And then in the second triangle here, we can set up a sine ratio as well, opposite h over x. We know h is 10.9 now, over x, solve for x, and we have 15.7. Okay, that was our warm-up. You've tried some problems. Hopefully now you're feeling like a, a real master of basic trig ratios. So let's do some applied problems. Take a look at this one and see if you can solve it. Okay, let's take a look. So here is the line representing the lean there of the tower. Here's a straight up and down height line, and here's a completing the right triangle. That right triangle is really hard to see there. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to exaggerate it. Of course, this is not how much the tower is really leaning. It's only leaning a little bit, but I'm exaggerating the triangle so I can label things properly. So first of all, we know there's a four degree lean. Make sure you know the four degrees was not in here. Imagine this is the tower standing straight up. And then the tower leans. So there's the four degree lean. The four degrees goes in here from the original upright position to the lean of the tower, four degrees. If that's four degrees, then this here is 86 because these make 90. Now we know an angle inside the triangle, 86. And we also know the tower is 55.86 meters from the ground when it's leaning. So here it's leaning, and here's the height from the ground right here. Now we have 86 in this number. We are looking for the top of how high would the top of the tower be if it was standing up straight. That value is this h value here. Because again, if this represents the tower, imagine this thing was stood straight up. This h would represent the height of the original tower. So we can use a sine ratio, sine of 86, opposite over hypotenuse. And we get h equals 56 when we swap these and solve. Now that is super close to this. So notice that that 4% lean doesn't change very much the height of the tower. It just leans and it just loses 14 centimeters of its height. Only 14 centimeters of its height is lost when it's leaning. Amazing. All right. Something you should know before you try the next problem. There are two key terms in trigonometry. One is called angle of elevation. That is the angle from the horizontal looking up. So this angle is an angle of 
elevation. And then there's an angle of depression. It's the angle from the horizontal looking down. So angle of depression. Okay, here they are pictured here as well. Here's the horizontal angle of elevation. Here's the horizontal angle of depression. In this question here, which of these four angles is the angle of elevation from a hiker to mountaintop? Hopefully you chose angle two right here, angle of elevation from hiker to mountaintop. Next, which angle is the angle of depression from mountaintop to hiker? Well, hopefully you chose one. There's the angle of depression from mountaintop to hiker. Next, angle four is the blank. Look at angle four. All right, angle of elevation from cabin to hiker. And finally, angle three is the angle of depression, depression from the hiker to the cabin. Okay, so looking at this diagram, what is the angle of elevation from B to D? I hope you chose 15 degrees from B to D. There's the angle of elevation, easy to see. Next, what is the angle of depression from D to B? Angle of depression from D to B. All right, hopefully this time you did not choose 75. This is a common mistake, but that is not the angle of depression. Remember, we need the horizontal line. And then how much do you look down? That's the angle of depression. And that angle is 15, because these two make 90. Or alternatively, we have parallel lines, which are the two horizontals, and those two angles are congruent, 15, 15. Okay, next. Please read this, see if you can draw a diagram and solve the problem. Here we go. Here's the diagram. Here's the sun. Sun rays, stick is standing up, makes a shadow because the sun rays are being blocked right here. And we have a stick that was 1, the shadow is 1.3. We're looking for this angle of elevation to the sun, right? Angle of elevation to the sun. That is a tan ratio opposite over adjacent. Solving for the angle, we use inverse trig, and we have an angle of 37.6 degrees. So angle of elevation, 37.6. Next, please read this and try this one. All right, here we have a submarine underwater, a boat. Looking from the boat to the submarine, we have a distance of 238. That's the distance it was talking about directly from the boat to the submarine. It also says there's an angle of depression of 23. Please don't write the angle right there. Again, angle of depression from the horizontal line. Here's the angle of depression from the horizontal. So if that's 23 degrees, then this is 67 because these make 90. Now this gives you what you need. Uh, it is asking how, what is the depth of the submarine? So we're looking for this depth straight down in the water. What's the depth? We can set up a cosine ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. D over 6, 238, solve that. And we have a depth of 93 meters. Next, check this one out. See if you can sketch that. Okay, here's the answer, check your work. First of all, it's isosceles. So that base, when we draw a height line, is split into two equal parts. The two base angles are congruent in an isosceles triangle, 24, 24. After that, it's just a matter of using the tangent ratio. And then you find the area using area of a circle formula, sorry, area of a triangle formula. Next, continuation of that problem. Read this, see if you can figure it out. Okay, things are getting tougher. So here's the new triangle. The area has increased three times. So we found the area before, now we multiply by three. There's the area. Using the area formula backwards, we can solve for height. And now that we know the height, we can set up a tan ratio to find that angle. This is tricky. Hey, if you got through this, way to go. You have a pretty good understanding of this stuff already. And the more you practice, the better you get. So we're going to do some more tougher applied problems next class. But for now, here's a couple problems to leave you off with. Try these two. They shouldn't feel so bad. Uh, let's see how you do with them. Uh, these ones, the answers would not be revealed. So just trust yourself. Let's see how you do. Great work.